We're going to start with the surface anatomy features of the heart, and it's important to be able to orient the heart. This is the anterior surface right here, and I know that because I can see the auricles, the right and the left auricle here, the flaps on the surface of the heart. Those are part of the right and the left atria. Between the auricles, you see a major artery right here cutting towards the left side of the heart, and this is the pulmonary trunk. This is an artery that sends blood away from the right side of the heart and to the lungs. So the pulmonary trunk is actually sliced open, and we'll look at the valve inside that vessel later. So you have the two upper chambers of the heart, the right and the left atrium, and below the atria you have the right and the left ventricles. So the right and left ventricles are very different uh, in size, and this right ventricle is almost like a little pocket up above the very muscular left ventricle. What you see between the two ventricles is a distinct depression here, and this depression is the anterior interventricular groove or sulcus. Within the interventricular groove or sulcus, you have major branches of the coronary vessels in general. All right, getting back to the front surface of the heart, one thing that you can see on surface anatomy is a very opaque little skin sticking tightly to the organ. This is the outer layer of the wall of the heart, and it's the visceral pericardium, also called the epicardium. So it's this thin skin that you can peel up. When we peel it up, we can see the really muscular uh, myocardium underneath right there. I'm going to turn the heart to the back side, and one thing I want you to notice is you can't see the auricles anymore, but this lighter colored area up above, these are where your uh, right and your left atrium are. We're on the back side now, and you can see the muscular ventricles below. There's a distinct groove or depression between where the atria meet the ventricles, and my probe is lying within that depression now. That's called the atrioventricular groove or sulcus. It also is called the coronary sulcus because there's an important blood vessel, vein, running in this little depression. It's called the coronary sinus. You can't see the coronary sinus, but it lies right in this depression, and it brings deoxygenated blood from the heart wall back to the right side of the heart, and we're going to see that in another segment. So coronary sinus is the vessel, and atrioventricular groove is the space. All right, I'm turning back to the front of the heart, and we're going to go back to those, um, that vessel that I mentioned, the pulmonary trunk, that artery that's sending blood away from the heart. There's another major artery sitting behind it. I have my my finger on it right now, and my thumb is inside the vessel, and that's the aorta. The ascending aorta comes up from the left side of the heart and delivers nutrient and oxygen-rich blood to the body. The major branch coming off of that aorta, the very large branch, this little stump that you see here, is the brachiocephalic artery. And then you see the aorta continuing on. Some calf hearts, uh, if we're lucky, will have more of an extension of these vessels, such as this heart here. And so with this heart, you can notice the brachiocephalic trunk or artery coming off, and then this whole piece here is a continuation of the aorta itself.